I just want to say thank you for coming to the NASA headquarters here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. What an amazing day. What an amazing event. What an amazing opportunity to honor such amazing Americans. I want to start by thanking the families of, and I'd, I'd like you to give a big round of applause for each of these members I'm about to mention, the family members of Katherine Johnson. The family members of Dorothy Vaughn. And the family members of Mary Jackson. And I just want to say, these were the three hidden figures in a very prominent book that became a magnificent movie that started a movement that brought all of us here today. But they are a small piece of the overall, I guess, cadre of professionals that helped us not just get into orbit, but also get to the moon, the people of NASA who are now known as the hidden figures. So thank you to all of the hidden figures throughout history that have made NASA such a successful agency. That deserves applause as well. So when we think about ultimately what we were up against at the time, this was a contest of political ideologies. It was the United States of America at the time against the Soviet Union. And we were in a contest of political systems, of not just political, but economic systems and demonstrating technological prowess. It was a very intense time and we were trying to ultimately win what was at the time called the space race. And the reason we were able to do it is because of 400,000 people that worked for NASA at the time contractors that supported NASA that ultimately made this possible. But there was this element that at the time was not recognized. And here we are 50 years after the landing of the Apollo 11 moon lander next month, 50 years later, um, celebrating those figures that at the time were not celebrated. And now it is time to celebrate them in a major way. So I also want to say, um, Thank you to all of you for being here. It's a, a wonderful day. And my job right now is to introduce a good friend of mine, Senator Ted Cruz from the state of Texas. And I just want to start by saying this. When this movie first came out, um, we had an opportunity to, I don't remember what it was, a social event of some kind. And a number of members of Congress were there, a number of senators, bipartisan. And Senator Ted Cruz was there talking about this brand new movie that came out called Hidden Figures. And I remember him talking about Katherine Johnson specifically. He saw the movie once, then he comes out, and he's talking to members of Congress about what a wonderful movie it is and who Katherine Johnson is. And then from there, he starts talking about this guy, Al Harrison. Now, Al Harrison is not a real figure. Al Harrison is a figure that is kind of a, a, a a number of, of NASA center directors wrapped up into one character for the purposes of the movie. But Al Harrison, I think, represented uh, great, leadership, great leadership at the time at NASA. Um, and I remember Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, before his colleagues in the House and the Senate, acting out a moment in the movie where Al Harrison takes some kind of ax to the bathroom sign at the, uh, at, the, at the center uh, there in Virginia, the, the Langley Research Center in Virginia. Um, so this was clearly, uh, had a big impact on Senator Cruz. It, it is also true uh, that when I be, got nominated for NASA Administrator, he said, hey, here's what we need to do. We need to, we need to change the street in front of the NASA headquarters and call it Hidden Figures Way. And of course, then he teamed up with uh, the DC Council Chairman, Phil Mendelson, uh, who led the charge in making this day become a reality. So we have a lot of people here to thank. It's a great day here at NASA. Um, and I just want to thank Senator Ted Cruz for your leadership on this, your hard work, and ultimately being here uh, to celebrate this very momentous day. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Ted Cruz.
Well, thank you, Jim, and let, let me first of all congratulate you uh, that, that under your leadership, NASA makes the trains run on time. Today is a celebration of women. Today is a celebration of African American pioneers. Today is a celebration of American heroes. This is a wonderful day. Let me say how humbled I am, how honored I am to spend time with the families of these extraordinary, fearless, visionaries. Not only do we have the families of Katherine Johnson and Dorothy Vaughn and Mary Jackson, but we also have Dr. Christine D Darden, who was herself a human computer, and she has joined us here today as well, and we're honored to be with you. You know, this is a moment reflecting on history. But it's also a moment that I think impacts all of us personally and directly. And so with a little indulgence, I'll share a story just from my family. Uh, when the movie, Hidden Figures, came out, uh, I took my family to see it. I've got two little girls. I brought both my girls, brought my wife, and I brought my mom. And we all sat in the theater together and watched it. My girls are 8 and 11. Um, after the movie, Heidi and I sat down with our girls as we were putting them to bed that night. And we were just talking to them. What'd you think of the movie? What'd you think about what you saw? And it was interesting. That movie was the first time they had seen a movie that showed segregation. And they were confused. They were like, well, why would people do that? And we had probably an hour-long conversation that evening about this nation's challenging and troubled history on race. And, and, and in many ways, it was pure and wonderful to see an eight-year-old and 11-year-old so flabbergasted at what an idiotic and evil idea. But we also talked about women in the workplace. And the movie begins talking about computing the orbits of Sputnik when Sputnik was launched and began orbiting the Earth. Well, my mom, my mom graduated from Rice University in 1956 with a math degree. And she got hired by the Smithsonian uh, to help compute the orbits of Sputnik. And so I was asking my mom at the time, my mom's 84, and I said, all right, Mom, what, how accurate was that? Something I just asked the families this morning. What, how, how good a job did the movie do capturing what it was like to be a woman in a very difficult workplace in the 1960s or the 1950s? And my mom's comment, she said, you know, I thought it was actually remarkably accurate. Now, it's Hollywood. It's a movie. But it captured the essence of it, which, which, if I may take some liberties, is largely what, what the families, what, what Dr. Darden said. Uh, and I commented at the time, I said, you know, it's a strange thing to today's ear to hear the women mathematicians referred to as computers. I said, you know, we all think of a computer as a hunk of metal on our desk. And my mother laughed. Her very first job before being at the Smithsonian, she worked at Shell. And she said, you know, my, you know what my first job title was? Computer. So to the families who are here, all of us, we are quite literally the children of computers. You know. A street sign is a piece of metal that's under the wind, the sun, the rain, the snow. But a street sign is a lot more than that. Because for years and then decades and then centuries, when little girls and little boys come to see NASA, they're going to look up and see that sign. And they're going to say, hidden figures, what, what's that? What does that mean? And that, in turn, is going to prompt a story 
a story about the unlimited human potential of all of us, a story about women who helped take mankind to the moon, who helped conquer the greatest challenges of an era, and your story, and your mom's story, and your grandmother's story, and your mom's story, are going to inspire generations after generations of kids, and in particular, little girls. Little girls who may be told at school, you can't do something. This sign is a powerful testament that anybody who is telling a little girl or a little boy, you can't do something, is not telling you the truth. This is a monument that you can do anything. So I was inspired by the movie. I was even more inspired by the stories behind the movie. And so I introduced legislation to rename this street. I joined with Senator John Thune. I joined with Democratic Senator Bill Nelson in moving the legislation. And then let me say, DC Council Chairman Phil Mendelson took up the lead. And the Senate and the DC Council worked hand in hand to get this done. Phil saw this as a challenge that needed to happen. He jumped on it immediately and he said, we're going to make this happen. Phil, let me thank you and all of the council for your strong leadership making today a reality. <laughs> and with that, I'm very glad to recognize Phil Mendelson. I need the hat for the sun, but I don't need it up here. Good morning. And thank you, Senator. Thank you for those uh, kind remarks. Um, and uh, Administrator Bridenstine, uh, the author, Margot Shetterly, who's going to speak after me, and uh, Dr. Darden, and all of the family and guests. Uh, g again, good morning, and thank you for being here. Uh, my remarks are going to be slightly different uh, because I am the chair of the Council of the District of Columbia, so I bring more of a local perspective to this. Uh, we see that the, the names of streets are often an opportunity to be able to celebrate something in our history or to recognize something that's important in our history, and that's true today. Um, this is also an opportunity, as the senator noted, where the federal government and the local government have worked together on this issue. As the senator noted, there were a number of senators who introduced the legislation to do this. It was important to do this. Uh, but this is a local matter, and so we took this up and we worked together, and that's exactly the way the governments, the federal government and the local government should work, and that's important. It's also, though, recognizing that the District of Columbia is not just the nation's capital. It's not a federal city. It is actually a local city with over 700 residents, over 700 residents, and growing and doing quite well and being able to manage its affairs. And that the folks, like the hidden figures, and the many other people who work for the, district gov uh, to, for the federal government uh, are part of our community. And uh, so when they're doing something that's important to the country and to the federal government, it's also a part of our city. And that's an important theme today as well. And then the senator touched on this, and I just wanted to touch on this as well. Um, history is important, as we all know. And it's hist history is important for the primary reason that it, it teaches us a lesson, or many different lessons. And part of this is not just the importance of the hidden figures, the human computers, and what they did to help us in our country's mission to uh, get to the moon, uh, but it's also the history here as well is about the history of race in this country and racism in this country. And I think one of the reasons why the story and the movie was so impactful is because it's not just an interesting story and it's not just a story of individuals, but it's also a story of and acknowledges 
the racism that's been in our country and how we still struggle to deal with that and to overcome that, to recognize it, to be able to talk about it, Senator, and uh, to um, continue to look at the challenge of how we overcome that. So there are these many different themes today. I'm really honored to have worked with you, Senator, um, and with the Congress, and uh, for us to get this done so that we're here today and so that we will have this lasting symbol. Thank you so much. Do I introduce you? I believe I ha also have the responsibility of introducing the next speaker, um, Margot Shetterly, who is the uh, author. I'm not very good at long introductions, so that is my introduction, but it's really an honor to be here <laughs> with you, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Chairman Mendelson, for that introduction. Um, to the family members of the women being honored, Dr. Darden, to all of our distinguished guests, to NASA leadership, employees, and alumni, the public, it is a privilege to be here today. And I just want to say that uh, my dad spent his entire career working as an atmospheric research scientist at NASA Langley. And today is his birthday. He is not here today, <laughs> celebrating with my mom. But um, I think of this as a really a magnificent birthday present to someone who had um, a, really an intimate connection and was there at the beginning of this story. History is often seen as an outcome. And we see it often as a fixed endpoint to prescribed circumstances. And so when people think of NASA's history, it's usually that triumphal moment of the Apollo 11 mission and the moon landing that comes to mind. And of course, in just over a month, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of that landmark event. And for many people, that was the culminating moment of NASA's history. Hidden Figures, however, is not about the end of the story, but it's about the beginning of the story. It's about how the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics became NASA, it's about how airplanes paved the way for spaceships. And it's about how human computers, these female mathematicians, were doing the heavy lifting in aeronautical research and many, many other fields long before those chunks of electronic circuitry became the defining feature of our modern life and work. Hidden Figures is also about how the black women combated the quotidian humiliation of racism through perseverance and through mathematical talent. And it's about how women of all backgrounds prove that not only are women good at math, sometimes they are the best at math. <laughs> and most of all, Hidden Figures is about taking off our blinders and recognizing the contributions of the unseen individuals who were there at the beginning of the story and whose persistence and whose courage have delivered us to where we are today. So may this street, Hidden Figures Way, serve to remind us and to everyone who walks here and who comes to this building of the standard that was set by these women with their commitment to science and their embodiment of the values of equality, of justice, and humanity. But let it, let it also remind us of the Hidden Figures Way which is to open our eyes to the contributions of the people around us so that their names, too, are the ones that we remember at the end of the story. By writing the truest and the most complete vision of our collective past, we open the door to a more powerful vision of our shared future. Thank you so much for everyone for coming. And I believe now we move to the unveiling portion of our event. We're going to stick around for a few minutes for a photo op here, but I just want to, number one, thank everybody for being here. I also have another important task, and that is to maybe shed a little 
visionary kind of, uh, just give a little vision about where we're going in the future here at NASA. It is absolutely true. The hidden figures did everything that was necessary and appropriate to get us to the moon back in the 1960s. It is also true that in the 1960s, we've got a, we got a cherry picker over here making a lot of noise. I'm wondering if we could ask, oh, they're actually going to unveil it right now. Fantastic. <laughs> He's allowed to make all the noise he wants. <laughs> all right. So back to uh, back to where we're going. 1969, we landed on the moon for the first time. In those days, the astronaut corps consisted of test pilots and, and fighter pilots, and that was it. And there were no opportunities for women and no opportunities for minorities. And here we are, 50 years after Apollo, and we're going back to the moon, this time sustainably. In other words, this time when we go to the moon, we're going to stay. And we're doing it under another name. It just so happens that Apollo, which of course was the name of the program that got us to the moon in the 1960s, Apollo had a twin sister in Greek mythology. His twin sister, her name was Artemis. And it just so happens that Artemis, the twin sister of Apollo, is the goddess of the moon. And here we are, 50 years after Apollo, going back to the moon sustainably under a program named Artemis. And when we think about Artemis, we have today a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps. And when we go to the moon this time, we are going to go not only with the next man, but we are going to go with the first woman. The legacy. Of course, we are living out the legacy of Apollo. But this generation, our generation, we are the Artemis generation. It is up to us to go back to the moon, this time sustainably, take what we learn, learn how to live and work on another world, namely the moon, and then go on to Mars. And that's what this generation is all about with a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps where all of us can see ourselves as having these opportunities. The senator mentioned his daughters. I have a daughter myself, Sarah. She's 11 years old. And I think it's important that she sees herself as having every opportunity that I saw myself having growing up. That's why the Artemis program is so important. It's why the Artemis generation is so important. And this time when we go, we're going with all of America. Thank you all so much for being here, and let's take some pictures. <laughs>